human anesthesia vaporizers. What is a vaporizer? It's a device which delivers a known and reproducible concentration of anesthetic vapor in a safe and reliable way. Ideal properties. Should be lightweight, portable, have clear safety features, be corrosive and solvent resistant, be low resistance, and the output should be unaffected by changes in fresh gas flow and ambient temperature and pressure. What factors should affect the vaporizer design? This is based on the volatiles SVP, boiling point and MAC. Saturated vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by vapor in equilibrium with a liquid in a closed system. It's affected by the temperature of the system, the surface area of the liquid and the solids in the liquid. As the temperature increases, the SVP increases in a non-linear fashion. Top left corner, there's a container containing liquid. In any liquid, some molecules have sufficient energy to leave the liquid and become a vapour, i.e. evaporation. It occurs only at the surface of a liquid and requires heat energy, latent heat or vaporisation. If the liquid is in a closed container, i.e. a vaporiser, the molecules will hit off the walls, producing a pressure. At any given temperature, a point of dynamic equilibrium will come into exist when the number of molecules leaving the liquid is equal to the number of molecules entering the liquid condensation. At this point, this is known as the SVP, saturated vapor pressure. Classification of vaporizers can be complex in multiple ways, but a common way would be measured flow or variable bypass. Measured flow is for DES. You have a separate independent stream of vaporizer flow, which is added to the fresh gas flow. In comparison, variable bypass, the most common is plenum. This is driven by a positive pressure due to the high resistance of the vaporizer. Variable bypass. So as we discussed, plenum or plenum vaporizers are high resistance. This is shown in the top right corner with a sieve of fluorine vaporizer. Fresh fast flow is above atmospheric pressure, and we'll discuss this next. Examples include the tech series, the drawer vaporizer. These are low resistance driven by the patient's minute ventilation, the portable, and example bottom right corner, Oxford miniature vaporizer. The key fit features of a plenum vaporizer, splitting ratio, temperature compensation with the bimetallic strip and the copper heat sink and the importance of saturation of the gas via baffles and wicks. These will be discussed on the next slide. This is a typical plenum vaporizer. So the fresh gas flow moves from the left to the right. There's two streams, one by the bypass channel and the other one moves into the vaporizer chamber. The ratio of the amount which goes into the bypass chamber versus the vaporizing chamber is determined by the splitting ratio, which is made from the concentration dial set by the anaesthetist. To ensure the fresh gas flow, into the vaporizer is fully saturated, we increase the surface area, and this is achieved by our wicks and baffles. As the SVP of the volatile agent is affected by temperature, the temperature of the vaporizer chamber must be kept constant. If the temperature falls, the SVP falls, and therefore the amount of vapor leaving the vaporizer chamber drops. Note, latent heat of vaporization. So as the vapor is produced, this will reduce the energy within the volatile liquid and thus lower the temperature. So temperature compensation is achieved via a copper heat sink and bimetallic strip. The bimetallic strip for this tech series is two conjoined dissimilar metals which expand and contract at different rates as the temperature varies and thus open and close the aperture into the vaporizer chamber. Desferin is a little bit different to the other volatile agents and therefore there's a different vaporizer in order to allow it to work effectively. Firstly, it has a low boiling point, so it would intermittently boil at room temperature and thus the vaporizer increases the temperature to 39 degrees and also resulting in an increase in pressure to 194 kilopascals. The special features of this vaporizer, it requires electrical power, it's controlled by electrical measures, unlike other plenum vaporizers. It has special filling arrangements. It has a higher concentration percentage dial up to 18% and it cannot be used in MRI. This is a Desfluorin vaporizer. From the left to the right, in and out, and it has a power supply. The overall aim of this vaporizer is to add fully saturated gaseous desfluorin to the fresh gas floor. This must be achieved in an accurate way. The amount of desfluorin added to the fresh gas floor must be proportional to the fresh gas floor rate. First of all, Desfluorin is heated to 39 degrees at a pressure of 194 kilopascals. Fresh gas flow passes through the flow resistor producing a fixed resistance. As flow increases, back pressure against the differential pressure transducer increases and this results in a reduction in variable resistance. 
hence increasing vehicle output to match the increased gas flow. Therefore, there's two flow control valves. So the differential pressure transducer influences one, and the second is influenced by the anaesthetist who controls the desired Deslerian percentage. Problems of vaporizers. This is not an extensive list, but it covers the essential problems and some of these only relate to plenum vaporizers. So volatiles, incorrect volatile in a vaporizer. Overfilling of the vaporizer reduces surface area and therefore reduces saturation of the cavity gas. Tipping of the vaporizer may result in liquid moving into the bypass chamber and thus increasing vaporizer output. This is reduced by the anti-spill mechanism. IPPV results in variation in pressure and the gas may move back into the vaporizer um, and this is known as the pumping effect. This is reduced by non-return valve. Halothacin contains a stabilising agent which can block vaporizers. In addition, the carrier gas, so increasing the fresh gas flow at high levels may result in reduced saturation of the carrier gas. And changes in viscosity and density of the, of the carrier gas may affect splitting ratios. Altitude and vaporizers. We'll start off with the variable bypass. These always deliver the same partial pressure, so theoretically they shouldn't be affected by altitude, however they are, because there's a reduction in temperature at high altitude, which reduces output. So therefore, if you double the altitude, the output of the vaporizer increases to maintain the same partial pressure. This is different in comparison to the TEC-6 vaporizers for desflurane. These are pressurised to two atmospheres and there's no compensation for ambient pressure. So at altitude, the amount of desflurane reaching the alveoli reduces at the same percentage. So the dial must be adjusted to increase the concentration, the percentage of desflurane output. And there's manufacturer tables to identify how this is achieved.